Hello everyone. In this demo we'll be using PowerShell Empire, which is a tool within Kali Linux, to gain a remote shell of a Windows 10 machine inside of a Windows Active Directory environment, and going over some obfuscation techniques to help mask your attack, and seeing how the Pelliverall process works. In this uh, lab demo we have a Windows 10 professional machine here on the top left, Kali Linux on the right, and we have a Windows 22 server as well. So first thing we're going to do is start up PowerShell Empire. So inside of a root terminal we're going to be running PowerShell Empire server. Let's go ahead and enter on that. While that loads up, let's go into a different terminal. We'll be running PowerShell Empire as a client. Welcome to the Empire. Alright, so currently we have zero listeners and zero agents. Uh, PowerShell Empire uses listeners to listen to what's coming in, as any remote shell does. The agents end up being the target machines. So let's go ahead and start up a listener. So the command use listener, let's use an HTTP listener here. It's going to give us a bunch of different commands that we can use. Three things are most important. Uh, in this case. We have a host, which is the uh, address that the target machine is going to connect to, the port itself, the attacking machine is listening in on, and the bind IP, which is what the uh, attack machine is going to be. If you're just using this on a local environment, let's say you have this machine on the same network, then you don't need the bind IP, the host IP is going to be accessible from that, uh, but in our case we're going over an internet connection. Um, in this topology. So here in the topology we can see that we have uh, our Windows 10 machine here on the left on uh, IP address 10.2.0.101 and we have our Kali machine on the right 10.4.0.152 they're both behind uh, an added firewall connecting to a internet that is on the 192.168.77 subnet. Alright so now we have the HTTP listener um, options here. We're going to be needing to set the Hosts. So we can use set host. We'll be using the uh, WAN IP of the network. In this case, it's going to be HTTP 192.168.77.04. I'm going to be using 9090 as my port. I've just chosen this because I've set up some rules on the back end to allow some port forwarding. Then we're going to need to set the bind IP. This is going to be the local machine's address, so 10.4.0.152. We're going to set the port that the attacking machine is listening in on. It's going to be 9090 as well, uh, for the sake of making this convenient. So once we have those, we can review it, going to options. We can scroll back up here. We can see that our port has been set to 9090. The name of our listener is HTTP. The host itself is on 192.168.77.74 with a port of 9090 as well and our bind IP is our local IP 10.4.0.152 so now at the bottom we're going to execute this listener to start it up listener is now started now in order to create the payload we're going to be using a stager in this case use a stager uh, there's a lot of different stagers here that you can use uh, depending on what type of environment you're attacking. But in our case, we're going to be using the multi-launcher. So I'm going to be using this stage or multi-launcher. In this case, we have some uh, options here as well. Here we can see what's required. This generates a one-liner stage zero launcher for Empire is the description. So here we have some required fields. Base64 is true, so that's going to be what our one-liner is encoded as, and we're going to be using the listener of HTTP. So we're going to be setting the listener to HTTP, and everything else should be default. We know that our language is PowerShell. If you wanted to ch change the language, we have two different options, PowerShell or Python. In this case, we're just going to be speaking to PowerShell. So we can execute this. It's going to generate us a Base64 encoded PowerShell script. Uh, luckily, this is already copied to our clipboard. So I'm going to open up Notepad Editor here. 
have an old one here, so let's go ahead and click save. I'm going to save this to a folder I have here. It's in my lab environment. I'm just going to call it payload.txt. Hit save. So now on our Windows environment, this, you can see I have a payload.txt. That might be a little bit hard to read, but I'll open it up here. So that same Base64 encoded string that we have in our Kali Linux is now in this simple little text file. If we wanted to, we could just simply copy this, open up Windows PowerShell, and paste that right in. If we look down here in the Kali Linux, right now, nothing's happening. As soon as we hit enter here, ideally, there we go. An agent has checked in and is now here. Now we can do some simple things just to make sure that we're on the right machine. So we can run info, oh, sorry. First we need to actually utilize the agent itself. So we can go into our agents and see what agents we have. Currently have an agent, we can interact with said agent using the interact command. And we'll just be using that. And then now we can run some commands here. Really simple just to see what it is. We can run info. Uh, we can see that we're on uh, my internal AD environment, Barium under Cyber Week 2022. Uh, I'm running Windows Microsoft Windows 10 Pro. And I have my host name too, Win10-01, uh, along with the internal IP. So that's kind of interesting. You know, an easy thing we can do is we have a shell into the machine. So I can easily just pop calc. There we go. So proof of concept, it's working. Now, obviously this is going to be a little bit annoying to send over in any kind of payload, whether it be social engineering, phishing email, or uh, auto-downloading with JavaScript. So I'm going to kill this agent. We'll go back to our agents and kill the agent that's currently active. Confirm. So this agent is now killed. If we double check that, we can see that we no longer have any agents in our list. And we can see that our PowerShell is back into free environment. So one thing that we can do is host this payload onto a web server. So in this uh, bottom right screen, I have a Windows 22 server running IIS. And it's already configured. Really nothing, it's just a default site, really basic. But the default directory for IIS installations is gonna be under C, inetpub, www root. Now I know this is a little small, so we're gonna be creating a folder for the sake of keeping things a little clean, hacks. And inside of this, let's go ahead and take that payload that we had and paste it into this folder. Now to host it, let's just make it an actual web page under an HTML file. Now I can run invoke expression, and let's do it in plain text. So here we're gonna be doing IEX. We're gonna be creating a new object, net.webclient.download string, quotation there, and we're gonna be using our web service address. We need HTTP. 192, uh, 168.77.101 slash hacks slash payload.htm. And if we run this, there we go. So now we have a new agent checking in um, without actually having to run all this uh, at once. So what we've done is we've created an invoke expression to grab the string from our hosted payload and invoke that as a command. Uh, still a little boring. So I'm gonna go ahead and kill my agents again. PowerShell gets back to where it was. There we go, we're back to it. So let's clear the screen. Let's use an actual website, right? Cause this is still local in a sense, but let's uh, let's use some real DNS queries and go from there. I have a website, palmbeachstate.online. Now let's see if we can use something that's gonna be realistic looking, but that we're gonna be able to say, hey, a student might click on this, a teacher might click on this, really uh, solidify how phishing attempts might work. So within this, I've created an A record pointing to my local environment because obviously I don't want to host this on the public internet. In this case, we're going to change this to palmbeachstate.online. 
And there we go, another agent is cooked in. So it's actually doing a DNS query. And we're gonna go back to our Cali Linux box and kill this again. So that way we don't keep a bunch of agents running in the background. Let's do an NS lookup of... State.line. And we can see that we're using Google's DNS server, Quad8, and we're getting a local address for the A record of Palm Beach State online. So one thing that we can do is to really obfuscate this command, let's host the actual command inside of DNS and then call upon that using NSLOOKUP. Uh, DNS, you have lots of different records, SPF, MX, A records, quad A's. In this case, we're gonna be using a text record. So in this, I've created a text record that actually has the invoke command referring to the same domain underneath that payload. And you can obviously obfuscate this further uh, and so that way you don't have IEX inside of your actual text record. You can host this behind multiple different layers to truly obfuscate what is being seen by the target and hide what you're doing. But let's do a NS lookup to see if we can see that. So we're gonna be doing a Slack query for text on Palm Beach state.online. And there we go, we have our invoke expression inside of our text record. So let's clear this up again. Now, let's double check we don't have any agents. Agents are all clear. What we're gonna be doing is using PowerShell to use a, to invoke a command. This period is gonna now treat the next step as a string. And we're gonna be running NSLOOKUP, same command, dash Q equals txt, palmbeachstate.online with a minus one to only pull the last line of the record. Now, if we have this, we run that, boom, we have our agent again. Now that command doesn't look nearly as nefarious as invoke expression. All we're doing is performing an NS lookup, something a really basic command that might not get flagged by any local policies or uh, device protection. So now we can interact with our new agent. I can do a who am I? I'm running Cyber Week 2022 on Barium. If we open up a new PowerShell, we can do the same command here and we can see that we have the same user there. Now this is kind of boring, right? We can still do the same shell uh, command. We can open up shell. There we go. So we have our actual target machines command line now. We can do the same thing of popping calc. And we also pop, pop notepad. All right, kind of basic, kind of boring. So there's different modules within PowerShell Empire to do a lot of different tasks. So we can have modules and we can see here there are dozens of modules that we can run maybe cats, purposes escalation, trolling, exploitations, information gathering, collectors, persistence, uh, both in PowerShell and Python. Let's just troll the user and troll them with a message. In this, we have uh, really two things, message text, title. We can even change the icon type to critical question, exclamation, or information. But let's set message text to be saying, you have been hacked. And let's set the title to, set the title to Cyber Week Shenanigans. And let's execute that. Set agent to this guy, execute. And there we go, it's a little small. Uh, but it says cyber shenanigans you've been hacked and it's a simple error message box still a little boring Oop. sometimes yeah if you do that but you can get jump straight back into it and we go on to go ahead and interact with our agent again let's make sure that we're there well let's say we want to gather some uh some credentials here and we want to run maybe cats ah need some uh elevated context well let's see agents so here we can see that we have the agent name here now if you have privilege already you're going to be seeing an asterisk next to that we can also draw an info on this agent uh, we stopped interacting with it again info and here we can see our high integrity is zero indicating it's false so let's uh let's make that true let's bypass uac here and escalate so we're going to be using a different module called bypass PowerShell, privilege escalation, bypass UHD, 
environment. I like environment. You can run different one of these depending on which one works on your machine. This one I know works pretty well. And in this case, the only thing you have to do is set the listener. And in this case, since we're still interacting with the agent, you can see that now it's actually set properly. So let's set the listener to HTTP, execute this. Ah, there we go. So a new agent has just checked in. And if we run the agents command, we can see now we have two agents. This one's named KTN something, this one's BTR something with an asterisk indicating that we have uh, admin rights on this machine. So let's go ahead and interact with BTR. And now we can run Mimikatz. And this is gonna run in the background. It's gonna take a few seconds to run. Okay, so Mimikatz ran. And uh, let's go to the top and see what it says. And we can see here, ooh, look at that. I have the password to this user. Super secure password. All right, within this, let's run a port scan and let's use the module. Use module, let's see, there's a port scan something. PowerShell, Citral Awareness, Network, Port Scan. We'll run that and see what options we have here. Um, to save some time, let's only target a specific machine. So let's set hosts to our Metasploitable machine, 10.2.0.103, and execute this. And there we are. All right, so this ran. And this really is just a, another demonstration of what this tool can do. Again, there's absolutely an enormous amount of different items you can do here. Let's see. Power Cat's a fun one. Oh, lateral movement. Right, let's go back into the shell and we can see what we can do. So, I mean, in this case, just demonstrating, uh, now we have a root shell within Windows, so we can do a net user, fake user, super secure two slash add. Let's go back to our Windows machine here, our other terminal, net user, there we go. Fake user created. And if we really wanted to, net local group, administrators fake user slash add and we can check that here net local group administrators that's not how you spell there we go we can see that fake user is inside of this shell so now I've created a fake user created a user within a Windows environment I can then start to use that to laterally move within the network. PowerShell Empire also has a lot of persistence machine tools. You can use those to apply this agent and this remote shell persistently within the registry, within a task schedule. We can see those here. Use module persistence. You can see that we have a few different ones that we could use. And so we take a look at this one, and this is going to persist a stager or a script via a registry creep. So there you have it. Uh, now we're just going to back out of this. Let's list our agents that we have. Got a few there. We can kill a specific one. We can kill all of them. Now we can exit our client. We can then go over to our server terminal window over here and exit this as well and that should kill the HTTP listener, which you would also be able to do within the client. So thanks for following along and happy hacking.